Hey, believers and non-believers, I hope you're all staying safe out there during this pandemic. If you're looking for more podcasts to pass the time while you're practicing social distancing, I have just the thing for you. Euphemet with Jim Perry is a podcast documentary series about the unknown and our relationship to it, featuring real people sharing astonishing paranormal experiences. In search of the other side, the thing under your bed, that signal of unknown origin, and the true stories behind the strange phenomena that are outside the sphere of popular consciousness. I have been non-stop binging this series, and if you love podcasts that explore the humanity of the paranormal, I know you'll love this show too. And you'll actually hear Jim later in this episode, so make sure you stick around. You can hear Euphemet wherever you listen to podcasts. That's Euphemet, E-U-P-H-O-M-E-T. Hello, believers, non-believers, and everyone in between. You're listening to Stories with Sapphire. I am Sapphire Sandalo. Now get cozy and open your mind because it's story time. Welcome to the first season of my new show, where I'll be sharing a multicultural perspective on the supernatural. If after the show you feel compelled to share a story, need paranormal advice, or want to share interesting paranormal news, send an email to storieswithsapphire at gmail.com. This is an independently run podcast. If you like what you hear and would like to support the show, consider becoming a patron. Visit patreon.com slash stories with Sapphire to see the different tiers and perks, such as a tarot reading from me. Supernatural occurrences often happen among those with whom we have close relationships, whether it's our friends, significant others, or most commonly, our family. What I love about these stories is that they reveal this unseen, unexplainable force that connects us in this episode, you'll meet sisters Brittany and Melissa, whose family communicates through symbols from the other side, as well as Jim Perry, host of the Euphemet podcast, whose relationship with the paranormal runs deep in his blood. Chapter 1. Red Sheets, Eggs, and Light. Okay, I guess I can start. Um, my name's Brittany. I'm from Irvine, California, born and raised, and my mother is Filipino, um, but she was born in America, so she was first generation. My name's Melissa. I am Brittany's sister, so born and raised in Irvine, and my mother is the same lady, so (laughs) I'm half Filipino, and so our Lola is from the Philippines. We never met our Lolo, but he is the one that's very spiritual very spiritual so he's like the direct influence i guess to any paranormal activity or like spiritual discussions i think just growing up our mother was she always told us how he was into kind of the spiritual world and from a young age he would take her he was into rosicrucianism um that's like it's like a church in it's like a yeah it's like a weird (laughs) church not weird it's not like weird a, it's a <laughs> cut that out <laughs> rosicrucianism is a combination of occultism and other religious beliefs and practices the central feature is that they believe that its members possess secret wisdom handed down from ancient times it's something i don't know apparently you need to just experience it and we never got to really go but yeah it's but he belonged to this church i think he was like a prominent member mm-hmm. of it so there were a lot of photos actually in our house of him like in these robes. At these church, yeah. Yeah, at these church functions. Um, and he would bring my mom and her two cousins along to it. And they kind of gave us these and then interesting stories. When she was younger, she, she told us that he, like, disappeared one year for, like, a little bit to go travel to... Like a spiritual Yeah, it was like a spiritual, like, trip. Mm-hmm. And apparently he went to Egypt. Apparently she, he visited these pyramids. Um, our mother isn't here anymore to... To back kind of this back up this because up. <laughs> anyways but yeah. he, apparently he came back with like this souvenir pyramid like 
and it had a lot to do with like energy yeah she used to like sit underneath it for like enlightenment um so, those are just stories that our mother always told us yeah. from a very young age so I feel like we were always in touch with oh the spiritual world and we are very I mean we were brought up Catholic and our Lola is Catholic but also we have this side where it's like very spiritual and which I alternative wish, I wish she was still around to kind of un- like explain the balance because yeah. our Lola was so Catholic like militantly Catholic mm-hmm. um and her husband was I don't know, the almost opposite. Yeah. In a way. He just had his own spiritual exploration, so I just don't understand how those kind of mesh together <laughs> in a way. And I believe yeah. she used to tell us that he would be able to like leave his body. His Yeah, spirit. that's crazy. Yeah. yeah, the astral projection. Like he yeah. was practicing that. He was before practicing he passed yeah. away. removing um, his spirit from his body or something like that. Well, here was a wild story when he passed away. Like, I guess immediately there was, like, this insane, like, breeze through the house in Echo Park. And that house is, like, where all of, like, our aunts lived at the time. Like, that's kind of the house where everyone moved to, like, when they first stepped foot in America. Uh, So everyone's in the kitchen, and then he passes away, I guess, in his room. They were all in the kitchen morning, and then this huge breeze comes, and then, like, the doorbell rings, and they open, and there's, like, nothing there, which is wild. And then my mother's Ninong, Ninong Chris, he was our grandfather's, like, best friend. He was also living in the house at the time. I guess right before my grandfather passed away, he, like, covered his room in, like, red sheets and stuff. I guess that's what my grandfather, like, instructed him to do. So I don't know what (laughs) was tied to that either. In Filipino traditional practices, the color red is thought to ward off illness and bad spirits. I don't know if this is the exact reason, but maybe the red sheets were placed to rid the room of any negative energy that might have lingered there after their Lolo passed. And they also wanted to like behead a chicken or something. I think that happened. I think Lola, that did happen. Lola had to behead a chicken or something. Yeah. It's a I don't know, some ritual. Uh, Yeah, I think it's a part of the ritual. Animal offerings are also common in traditional Filipino rituals. When one becomes a widow, they must cut a chicken's throat outside of the house and release it. If the chicken flies up, the spirit of the recently deceased is on its way to the spirit world. If the chicken quickly drops to the ground, it's a sign that the spirit may stay on earth for a while. Animal sacrifices are a very controversial subject in our modern world, but the animals that are offered are never discarded in vain after the ritual. They are cooked and prepared as a meal afterward. Did either of you inherit any of these? Any like? I always think I did. Like, I think I'm clairvoyant or something, or I don't know. <laughs> Why do you Sidekick. I just think I have, like, a sixth sense, but doesn't everyone? <laughs> like, everyone in yeah. L.A. thinks they're, like, a psychic. <laughs> no, um, I don't know. I get sleep paralysis. A lot of times I feel like I see, like, I think they're demons or something, like a black figure, and they're coming close to my face. And when it happens, I try to, like, shake my body out of, like, being in sleep paralysis. But my most recent episode, I felt like someone was choking me. I get it maybe like once a month, but I only get it when I'm at home in Irvine. Hmm. So when I went to college, I never had sleep paralysis. But yeah, it only ever happens when I'm at home. Do you have a theory as to why? Because our house is haunted. (laughs) Weird stuff happens in our house. house Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I just think our Lolo is always in our house. Like for me, I always think that like our passed on relatives or like our mom or Lola or Lola Mm -hmm. I like refer to them as like I don't know objects so like for me my mom is light like the specific type of sunlight that happens Mm -hmm. it's definitely with clouds like whenever I like need her like the sun will like shine in this particular way and -hmm. then our Lola is a hummingbird and then our Lolo is like eggs like yeah different types of eggs so for his birthday or Christmas or Easter like weird stuff with eggs happen so my mom and I were baking one time and we had the eggs out and mm-hmm. next thing you know they were like gone we couldn't find them for like 10 minutes they like, just disappeared and then I, I thought to myself like oh it's like your dad we should probably go see your dad and our lola and lolo are they're in um forest lawn forest lawn in glendale, in glendale. Mm-hmm. so when we went to go see them their 
what is it their They're tombstone called? their tombstone was cracked yeah Whoa. yeah yeah it was like cracked. <laughs> they sent me pictures of it from, and they don't like, know how it happened it was definitely like this message like i don't know it's it's him and eggs well because he passed away during easter time oh, okay. ever since then there's been some weird occurrence with these eggs like no matter what it was it had to do with eggs yeah it was so odd did mm -hmm. you ever figure out why or like how it happened no we we just told maintenance like oh yeah. the tombstone's cracked like it needs to be fixed but we don't like go searching into it because we're so like oh it's them So you know how I like refer to my mom as light? So our dad, he has this little home office and one of his lights, one is broken and it's taped down. And when you try to turn it on, like it'll flash, but it won't stay on. Mm -hmm. So after our mom passed away, the light in his office, it would turn on and like he'd come home and the light was on and he'd be like, are you guys like, sorry, can I cuss on this? Yeah. <laughs> He's like, are you guys fucking with me? Like, why is this light on? Like it's taped down. Like you would have to like, hit it yeah. for it to even like flicker he'll come home and like the lights are on the specific just light that, that specific just, light yeah, yeah just this specific light i always think our mom is messing with him and i think she should always be messing with him but <laughs> yeah she'll like turn on the lights so that's why i'm like oh my mom is light in my head so mm -hmm. it happened when i was in college i i played collegiate softball and like my senior season was my first season without my mom so when my mom passed away our team wanted to dedicate a seat to her in our stadium and when we were dedicating it like the light came out at that moment too I don't know there's just so many instances where like my mom and like light kind of happened yeah. so okay so it was like you made the association because yeah happening. and then the stuff with my dad's office happened after I came back home from school mm -hmm. what I love about Brittany and Melissa's experiences is that they reveal a different way in which spirits can communicate with us for Brittany and Melissa, it could be through eggs, hummingbirds, or light. But these messages are meaningless unless they are received. Are there any messages that you've possibly been ignoring in your own lives? If someone were to come to me and said, oh, you're crazy, like that stuff doesn't happen, I'm like, well, sorry, your grandparents just aren't like <laughs> trying to- <laughs> Shaman. Aren't, yeah, they're just not trying to like mess with you. Wait, okay, we're gonna get a confession out of my sister. So when I was younger, <laughs> my Lola used to sleep in my room or whatever, and then she passed away and I was six. Mm -hmm. But when I was in maybe in elementary school, I found my Lola's crucifix in my bed. So Brittany, did you put it there or not? <laughs> I don't remember. It sounds You're like so something annoying. I would do. And but then <laughs> just say that it was our Lola, but it could have very well okay, been well, our grandmother as well. Yeah. Like, wouldn't you remember that? <laughs> That'd be really funny if I did that. I Just say remember. you did it. I don't remember it. I really You're full of shit. It. I really don't. I really don't. Okay, well, if it turns out Brittany did not do that, that's a <laughs> that's weird a fucking thing Isn't that, that happened. You did I it. Know. I really don't remember. Okay, anyways, moving on. Chapter 2. My Inheritance They say I have your eyes, your coveted nasal bridge that creates gaps between you and them, your short stature, a height that you somehow still manage to look down from, your porcelain skin that you display like fine china behind layers of glass. Your 12.5% Chinese and Spanish blood that you wear like a badge of honor, refusing to see it for what it is, an open wound that needs to heal. You smear it all over in hopes that it will cover the other 87.5%, erasing yourself just like they did. They say I have your eyes. They do not see the 500 years of self-loathing, denial, fear injected into my DNA. But I want to end this sequence. I will let the rays crack my porcelain shell and reveal the natural clay beneath, a brown as deep and rich as the layers of history forced to disappear underground, away from the sun. But my generation has been digging, and as we uncover these hidden remains, we cannot help but cry. For who could bury such beautiful artifacts? 
They say I have your eyes, but I look to the future and will never look back. Chapter 3, Passing of the Torch. I'm Jim Perry. I'm from the hinterlands of the northwest of America, uh, from Seattle, Washington, and I produce the show Euphemet. On my show, I'm just as interested in people's creepy experiences as I am their thoughts on the paranormal, spirituality, and exploring alternative ways of thinking. Jim does have an experience that I'll be sharing in a future episode, but I'd love to share with you now his insight on the importance of acknowledging the wisdom from those that have come before us. Is there anything that inspired you to start your show? Yeah, when I was a kid, I couldn't sleep. And so I would stay up and I would listen to radio that I didn't like or put on classical until I was turning those AM knobs and found Coast to Coast AM with Art Bell. And so from that point on, I was probably eight years old. Uh, Art Bell was a constant presence every single night for me. And so I was in really indoctrinated at an early age with not just the paranormal, but paranormal within the radioscape and the leading authors and conspiracies and stories of the time that are essentially sort of hardwired into my uh, thought process about what the paranormal even is. Um, In addition to that, though, there were things that would happen within my family structure that allowed me to really have no disbelief in terms of the paranormal when I was a kid. You know, I would be sitting down and watching TV with my brother and my mom would walk over to the phone and pick it up and start talking to my grandmother without the phone ever ringing. And I'd be at my grandmother's and the same thing would happen. And this was not just a normal daily occurrence, but sometimes it would happen several times a day where the phone would never have to ring for them to pick it up and talk to each other. So the understanding of how, you know, essentially psychic relationships are are tangible and they're a real occurrence was just right in my face. And it wasn't a weird thing for them. And so it wasn't really a weird thing for me. Did you ever talk to your mom about those moments? Yeah, I did. And they would always say, well, it's our ESP, you know, and at that time that that terminology was really popular. But You know, they were never, uh, neither her nor my grandmother were uh, students of it or uh, have books about telecommunication or psychic powers or ESP, but they almost thought it was kind of funny. Uh, It wasn't until later in life where I chatted with my grandma about some ancestry. And I was on a kick of like discovering ancestry.com and like went down that rabbit hole for a while and and uh, was thinking like, well, maybe I could be the one that like takes over the old genealogy family book when you know, just nerdy stuff like that. So I, I asked her about her family. I just wanted more information about some of her family because she had told me her relationship to to her grandmother and mother and um, some of the Native American traditions that they passed on to her because my great-grandmother was Native American. And one of these things that was ever-present was her mother's belief that uh, she was a white witch. They had established a something within their own genealogy that was passed down generationally these um, adept powers of some sort, uh, these psychic abilities, or these, these really these techniques for manifesting magic. Even talking about the story right now, I kind of feel like an idiot because I haven't done the due diligence to research the relationship between witchcraft and the Native American tribe that my great-grandmother was a part of. And there's a part of me, even though that's a part of my lineage, I don't feel qualified to even speak of, like sort of respectfully. So I should do research on that. But essentially, uh, my grandmother passed away very recently. And when she passed away, my mother was there with her. And they went through a process of my grandmother, you know, passing down her ancestral belief and powers to, to my mother. And my mother shared with me this story about holding my grandma's hand while she was 
beginning to pass and her telling her, well, just like when my mom passed with me, I'll tell you what she told me, and that's now you have this. Now you have the power. There's something about that that on, on the very base level, my grandma and my mom uh, are not, like I said, they're not avid enthusiasts of the paranormal. They're, for all intents and purposes, like sort of just realists. And this was a almost a ceremonial-like interaction they had together, and there was at least enough importance to recognize there being something other than this physical relationship that this power had some sort of importance. And whether that was really just a name for their devoted love and connection to each other, or it was literally like a passing of the torch, there's something so incredibly poetic and moving about that relationship that uh, stays with me. And I think about it all the time. And I think with that, um, just the idea that families in the past from all cultures have had these notions of having inherent powers within them and that there was an importance to sort of train and, and, and help those in their family discover how, how to either access these or that through initiation and through age and through process, you know, maybe one day they'd be ready to possess these powers, whatever they were. And, you know, we don't have much of that anymore in this culture. We don't have that sense of ritual and initiation that had forever been a part of our human existence. Those benchmarks have been really subsidized by consumer holidays and Sadie Hawkins dance and just name it, you know, your first car. But really, I can cuss on this. Like, who gives a fuck about that stuff, right? Like, you remember your first car because, like, hopefully you weren't, like, super entitled and it was a piece of shit, right? Like, oh, my God, like, I hated that van that I got handed down, but it was also so awesome. Like, that's the initiation process. Instead of something that's seemingly integral to our own self and our connection to our family and, more broadly, our connection to the other people around us and you know, what that means to be human. Like, these transitions are great, but they're also just reminders that we're getting old and that one day we won't be here and the next generation will be, right? And before they did that in a lot of different ways, and they were about teaching us something about ourselves as to where I don't, I don't know what we're being taught in these circumstances anymore, aside from maybe a regret for some of us about maybe how much we spent doing our wedding. And going like, oh man, like, here we are, you know, seven years after, and I I wish we would have spent that on, like, going on an awesome trip. Or I wish we would have just, like, you know, done it in my mom's backyard after all. Um, I hear that a lot from my friends in their 30s now. And why does that always happen? But that process of initiation into a consumerist culture is also one of lowering perhaps our consciousness and our consideration or respect for things. It makes us go fast. It makes us care about the wrong things. We don't think about people as family or neighbors or think of people even with the best of intentions. We think everyone's out to get us. It's not only after you start digging into the paranormal or the occult or just the esoteric in general, it starts this process of critical thinking about the construct of, you know, well, if ghosts are real, then what else could be real? It makes you start considering the nature of your own reality. And then within that, the nature of the alleged entire reality. And what's really, what's really could, what really could be important. Not to say that there aren't people that are involved in the paranormal that are make no considerations of that maybe just want like good fright maybe just want to make some money listen i don't think there's anything wrong with that 
But I think a lot of folks that are in this journey, and I think a lot of people listening to this podcast right now, or that listen to Euphemet, are ones that are in the pursuit of finding something more real. If you love podcasts that explore the human aspect of supernatural and paranormal experiences, then you should definitely check out Jim's show, Euphemet. Links are in the show notes. I didn't know there was going to be such like a punk podcast here. Now it's time for Spirited Discussion, the part of the show where I answer listener messages, offer paranormal advice, or discuss anything interesting in the news. Any advice that I offer is purely my opinion and meant for entertainment purposes only. Today's message comes from Katie. Hi, Sapphire. I'm 16 years old, and I'm a huge fan of the show. I need some personal help. I'm getting migraines from how confused I am. A month ago, I had a strange thing happen that I need help explaining. If you or one of your listeners can help me, I would really appreciate it. Anyway, last month, I had a strange dream. I was sitting in a hospital waiting room. Apparently, a man who was supposed to be my husband had gotten sick and was now in a coma and was going to die soon. As I was sitting in the room, a little girl who looked about four or five walked up to me. The child asked me why I was sad. Before I could control myself, I told her everything. When I was finished telling her about how I was losing my husband, the little girl held out her hand and asked me to take her to his room. I held her small hand, which felt as cold as metal left out in a blizzard, and led her to my husband's room. I opened the door and felt a sense of dread. The man on the bed, who was apparently my husband, looked like a male character I had made up for a story I was writing. My senses returned to me, and I realized that I shouldn't have brought a little girl here. But in my previous state of emotions, I didn't realize that the child had walked up to my husband. And as I stood by the doorway, I watched the girl kiss my husband's limp hand gently. When she stepped back, I watched my husband's eyes open. I woke up then, with tear stains on my pillow and face, but also with a feeling of relief. Two days later, my cat, whom I adopted two years prior, passed away from mysterious injuries. Was all this a coincidence, or was my dream trying to tell me something? Personally, I think it means something, but I can't figure it out. Thank you for your time. Thank you for sharing your message with me, Katie. So what I understand of dreams is that sometimes they can be a method through which spirits can communicate with us. So you mentioned that you felt this sense of dread during your dream, but when you woke up, you felt a sense of relief. My first guess of what this dream could be is that maybe your cat was trying to communicate with you through this dream. I don't know if the person who was supposed to be your husband represented your cat or if the little girl represented your cat. But in the dream, your husband wakes up from his coma and you feel like everything's going to be okay. Since our pets can't communicate with us verbally, maybe your cat was trying to tell you through this dream that something was about to happen, something was about to go wrong, but everything is going to be okay. Knowing that you had this dream about a month ago and it's still just like on your mind, you know, that's not something to ignore. You know, if you feel like there was significance in this dream, then there probably was. And I am very sorry for your loss. And who knows, maybe your cat might try to communicate with you in a dream in the future. So keep dreaming, keep listening, keep having an open mind, and maybe you'll learn more answers. So I hope that helps. Um, If anybody else has anything they'd like to ask me, any stories they'd like to share, feel free to email me at storieswithsapphire at gmail.com. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to subscribe on Apple Podcasts and leave a rating and review to help boost the show's visibility. 
and head to patreon.com slash stories with Sapphire to see the perks you'll receive by supporting the show. Does the supernatural run in your family? Let me know at storieswithsapphire at gmail.com. Salamat and good night. Stories with Sapphire is created and produced by me, Sapphire Sindalo. Special thanks to my guests, Brittany and Melissa Rochford and Jim Perry. Don't forget to check out Jim's podcast, Euphemet. I guarantee you'll love it. All other stories and music written by Sapphire Sindalo. For more information on this episode and my guests, visit storieswithsapphire.com. <laughs>